minutes. What is EM induction? Well, here I have a lamp and there's a lever connected to it here. If I turn the lever, what's going to happen? So I'm turning the lever. And... Oh, magic! The lamp is shining. Hello, welcome to IB Physics Made Easy. Today, we are going to talk about electromagnetic induction. I know, I know, some of you might find it difficult and tricky. Some of my students do too. So this is why I'm going to try to explain it in an easy way, in a simple way. So what is it in the first place? What is EM induction? Well, here I have a lamp and there's a lever connected to it here. If I turn the lever, what's going to happen? So I'm turning the lever and... Oh, magic! The lamp is shining. What happened there? I gave to the lamp some mechanical energy. The system inside transformed this mechanical energy into electricity that ended up in the LEDs, which transformed the electric energy into light energy and heat. So what is actually going on inside the lamp? Well, when I'm turning the lever, I must be turning also at the same time a loop or a coil. A coil is loops of wires which are turned, rolled up like this. There must also be some magnets in the lamp. So basically I'm turning a coil within a magnetic field. And when you do that, you create an EMF, a potential difference across the coil. Now, if the coil is connected within a closed circuit, like we're here, basically the coil is probably connected directly to the lamps, to the LEDs, well, current will pass. Current will flow through the circuit. So that's an example of EM induction. And you can have it the other way around too. You can put electricity into a system and via electromagnetic induction obtain a motion. That's a motor. That's an electric motor. Electromagnetic induction is everywhere. A good exercise is actually to walk around the house and try to find the devices that use such technology. Well, I propose that we go in the classroom and look at this a little bit in detail. Welcome to my classroom. <laughs> the weather is so good, we'll do it here. In order to uh, appreciate and enjoy uh, studying EM induction, there are three concepts you really need to grasp. You have seen these concepts before in previous chapters. Let's consider a magnetic field B directed towards the page. Now let's consider a positive charge Q. This positive charge Q has a speed V. Now let's consider that the magnetic field starts here. Before it enters the magnetic field, the charge is going straight. But as soon as it enters the magnetic field, it will feel a magnetic force. What direction will be this force? Well, you can define this using the flat hand rule, which is a hand rule which is very practical because it's always the right hand and it always works. This is a concept. When you hold your hand flat, the fingers will give you the direction uh, of the motion of the charged particle. The field uh, is given uh, by uh, uh, the palm, so what comes out of your palm is the direction of the field, and the thumb will give you the magnetic force. So if we apply it here, if we apply it here, we see the magnetic field <laughs> is going downwards. The uh, velocity of the charge is that way, so the force will be upwards. So now you can see 
that if I draw the trajectory when it enters the field, the, part, the trajectory of the particle will be upwards because it feels this magnetic force here. The magnitude of the force will be Q, V, B, if V and B are perpendicular. If they are not perpendicular and form an angle theta between them, then you just add sine theta. That is the first concept that you need to grasp before we start studying EMA induction. Now, the second concept you need to remember is the idea of charged parallel plates. Just imagine I have two parallel plates like this that are connected to a battery of EMF epsilon. That means that the potential on this plate will be epsilon. The charges here will have for each unit charge epsilon joules of energy. Here you'll have a potential of zero. So you have a potential difference between these two plates which is also epsilon. Because you have a potential difference between the two plates, between the plates you will have an electric field that forms. What will be the direction of this electric field? Well, the direction of the electric field will be the direction that would take a positive charge that I would place, for instance, here. It would go downwards, right? Repelled by these positive charges. So the electric field will be downwards. Now, if I place the charge in this electric field, let's consider now that I place a negative charge, say an electron. Well, this electron will feel a force QE, right? Q being the charge of the charge I place there, so the electron. Q will be minus E. Yeah, well, minus EE. E. That means that the force will be going upwards due to this electric field. That concept, if you have trouble with it, check out your textbook to master it. Now, the third concept is the idea of a wire in which you have a current flowing in a magnetic field when the wire is inside a magnetic field. Let's call it B. When this happens, the wire will feel a force, a magnetic force. How do you determine the direction of the force? Simple. Again, the hand rule. This time the fingers will give you the direction of the current. Yeah, this is the direction of the charge which are moving, so it's the same concept. The palm will give you the field, and F will be the force you feel. So in that case, you have something like this. Right? The charges are moving like this, the field is downwards, therefore the force felt by the wire will be to the left. The magnitude of this force will be I L B. I is the current, B is the field, L is the length of the wire which is within the magnetic field. Now, if you have an angle between the wire, that is the direction of the current, and the, the field, then you add sine theta here. Now, if you master these three concepts, you are ready to enjoy the study of EM induction. In this video, you were introduced to electromagnetic induction. We also saw together the three basic concepts you need to grasp in order to study EM induction in good conditions. In the next episode, we will look at the basic principles of EM induction. I encourage you to check it out. In the meantime, if you enjoyed the video, or if it was useful, please subscribe. Ciao!